Hi there, so this video is going to be about VAT, value added tax. Now you already learned in grade 8 in EMS that you've got two different types of revenue that the government um, gets in. The one is direct tax, that's the tax that is calculated on your salary or on profit of the business. And then you get indirect tax. One of the indirect tax items is VAT, value added tax. This is a tax le levied on goods and services rather than income or profit. So that then is tax charged on the purchases and supply of goods or services by a vendor. Now, why do we need to have something like value added tax? The, uh, it's because revenue is raised for the government to cover essential government expenditure. Who can register for that? Now, there's two types of registration that we are going to look at. The one is the mandatory registration. This registration is compulsory. This is for a business with a turnover, this means sales, exceeding 1 million rand per year. Um, this vendors or businesses must register for that. Then we also have a voluntary registration. When a business has a turnover that exceeds 50,000 but is less than a million per year, you can register for that voluntarily. Why would somebody then voluntarily register for that? Because there's advantages to this. Registering for VAT means that the business can reclaim VAT that they were charged when paying for goods and services. This we will call input VAT. So, there's two methods of calculating the VAT. The one is called the payment basis and the other one is the invoice, base, invoice basis. Now, when we work with the payment basis, we will look at money received and money paid. So VAT on cash received minus VAT on cash paid. Our focus here will be bank and cash. We do not work so much with these two or, or this one. We would rather work with our invoice basis, which means that VAT um, is charged when invoices is received um, and VAT is on invoices issued. So invoices received minus invoices issued. And this then will focus on our cash and credit transactions. When um, doing your VAT, you will have to fill in a VAT return. If you're registered for VAT, you will have to fill in a VAT return. And this form is called a VAT 201 form. When we fill in our form, we must submit the form, submission. When you submit your form at the office, it's on the 25th of each month. This is when you take your form to the office then. But when you do an electronic submission, then it's on the end of the month, the last day of the month, the 30th, the 31st, or if you're in February, it's 28th or the 29th. Together with your submission, you must also give your payment. You can pay in cash or check. Remember that check is like paying cash. Or you can do an electronic funds transfer. But the payment and the submission goes together. Um, when we look at our category A and B, um, VAT, it's every second month that you have to fill in your VAT form and submit as well. There is different types of categories. If you're a farmer and you will only do your VAT every six months, depending on the type of farming you're doing, then this category will be different. If you do not pay your VAT or you fail to submit your form, then there's penalties that can be charged. And with your penalties, there will also be interest charged. Now we're going to look at our different types of VAT items we get. There's mainly three types of items we, we have. We've got zero rated items, which means there's uh, the, the VAT percentage that is taxed on this, the tax rate will be zero percent. We've got our VAT exempt items, 
which means there is no VAT charge on these items. And then you also have your standard rate items. This is when VAT is 50% uh, is, um, on the items. So let's quickly look at our zero rated items. Now, zero rated items is items that is essential for somebody to live. This is goods or services that are taxed at a rate of 0%. That is charged at a rate of 0%. And the Minister of Finance or the government can adjust this percentage at any time. They can increase it to 1% maybe or 2%, but at the moment it's 0%. Items that are zero um, based items or zero rated items is brown bread, milk, milk powders, mash products, lentils, dried beans, fruit, vegetables, cooking oil, eggs, canned pilchards, paraffin, petrol, diesel, fuel, all the fuel. You will see that there is no um, car oil, yeah, it's only cooking oil, petrol, diesel, and fuel. No oil that you will use normally for your car. Um, when I talk about bread, it's brown bread and white bread um, in its purest form. No fancy stuff. <laughs> then, uh, that exempt items. This is goods and services that by law is not subjected to that. Now, normally this is items that already has other type of um, tax uh, charge to it. But it's mostly things like interest rates, export services, childcare services, and educational services. Those are services that's non-profit services, so you can't add that to them. Donations, when you sell something that is a hobby. Salaries and wages, remember there's direct tax on salaries and wages. Private sales of, of personal or domestic items, you can't ask that on that. This is all that exempt items. This is only examples. Then we have our standard rate items. Now, for this items, that is, uh, is charged 15%. This is when you go to pick and pay and you buy your chocolate over there. Then there's a 15% VAT on that chocolate. This is money. Um, uh, this money is not part of the business profit. It, the 15% VAT can't be added to the business profit. This money belongs to SARS. You'll see we're going to look at input VAT and output VAT, which will make this more clear when can we claim from SARS and when do we have to pay the, the, the VAT back to SARS. Remember, SARS is our South African Revenue Services. Let's quickly look at input VAT. Now, input VAT is when I pay VAT when I purchase goods or services. And this VAT that I paid, if I'm a VAT vendor, I can claim back from SARS. When we look at output VAT, it's VAT that we charge somebody when selling goods and services. This money does not belong to the business and must be paid over to SARS. When we talk about input VAT and output VAT, don't look at the money. Because in input VAT, we're paying, so the money is going out. But the items that we buy, the goods and services that we purchase, is coming into the business. So rather than focusing on cash, focus on the items that's coming in or going out. Input VAT is when I purchase items, when the goods are coming into my business, and output VAT is when I'm selling. The goods and services are moving out of my business. Then how does it work? When do I owe SARS or I can claim back from SARS? Remember, output VAT is, um, uh, so you have to pay SARS if you've got output VAT. It has to pay, be, be paid over to SARS. So when my output VAT is more than my input VAT, which I can claim back from SARS, then I'm going to owe SARS. But if I can claim back more than I have to pay, then SARS is going to owe me money. Let's just quickly look at our calculations for VAT. Now here we've got VAT inclusive and VAT uh, exclusive. Please make sure that you know that VAT inclusive is not input VAT. It's not the same concept. 
input VAT is VAT that is on purchasing items. VAT inclusive is when VAT is included in an amount. And in order for us to get the VAT amount out of, of that amount, uh, the VAT part out of that amount, we have to say times 15 over 115. Here's an example quickly. And when VAT is inclusive, it's included in this amount, and I have to extract it, I have to get it out. How am I going to get it out? I'm going to say times 15 over 115. VAT inclusive. VAT is included in that amount. Then we're going to look at VAT exclusive. When VAT is not included in an amount, so VAT's not already added to this, and we still have to work out VAT. It's only going to be 15% of that amount. 15% can also be written as 15 over 100. Ne? So let's quickly look. VAT inclusive, if I've got an amount of 120, uh, exclusive, remember VAT is not included in this amount. So I still have to calculate it, so it's just times for my 15%. And both of these answers are 18 Rand. The only difference is that 120 is excluding VAT and my 138 is including VAT. And this is the different way we cal ways we calculate it. So that is the intro to VAT.